So there is no such thing as science, okay? So science is just a Latin word that means knowledge, okay? So anything could be Nile, anything could be science, anything could be knowledge, right? Um, it doesn't mean wisdom, by the way. That's sapiens, sapienza. Mm -hmm. So you, the Italians had some great, great ones that we you now use. That's what we call homo sapiens. We're wise. We're yes. not knowledgeable things. I mean, chimpanzees know a lot more about finding termites, you know, in, a, in an anthill than I do or in a termite mound. Um, so they have knowledge. Do they have wisdom? I don't know. Homo sapien, the man who is wise. What is he wise about? What is he not knowledgeable about? I, I see where you're coming from, but I think that as someone who is very smart like yourself, legitimately lifetime in the space like yourself as, as a physicist, someone who has, is, is as connected across the physics community as anyone I've ever come across, the value of how and and who's you're a good guy too you're fun to talk with like the value of sitting down and having the conversation i don't envy the fact that you have to think about your physics community as well in the sense that you're like well how will insert x physicist right here think of me having y person on the show i don't think you should have to think like that i think that that bringing on like let's stay with bart sabrell as an example bringing him on bringing on bart sabrell doesn't mean that brian keating is defined by bart sabrell it means that brian keating is bringing on a guy who has a different perspective that he not only completely disagrees with but also thinks he can scientifically prove and that they have he's wrong. people like that and so that's what i'm saying like you shouldn't have in my opinion you shouldn't have to think like that if you want to talk with someone whose ideas you think are bad do it and like if if that means that like this physicist isn't going to come on your show in the future then fuck them you know what like they, 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 what are we doing here i guess you have to it's a matter of degree if you want to talk about well how much time because again i could spend my whole life debating debunking and there are channels that do that and channels that do it better yes. than i do it <laughs> they're also channels channel do a lot of it <laughs> yeah exactly uh but there's you know there's a limited amount of time attention that i can devote to this while still teaching you know hundreds of undergraduates and graduate students and and postdocs and and do scientific research and the 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 issue is that it, it also always comes down to this the fundamental thing which terence accused me of which I think is legitimate. I think he's absolutely right. I am a gatekeeper at some level. Mm, and I think yeah. we need gatekeepers, right? I have you a think gate. we need them? I think, I, well, let me give you an example. I have a gate around my pool at home because I have young kids and they have friends that come over that can't swim. Is that a bad thing? Should I not have a gate around my pool? I, mean, I don't think it's in, a parallel example. Well, let me give you other examples. So okay. we have things called peer review in science. So, so par scientific peer review is incredibly analogous to gatekeeping. It is 100% <laughs> analogous to gatekeeping. And now people will say, well, there are certain things that, you know, shouldn't go through and there are certain people, you know, that, that um, should be allowed to get platform and they can't do this. It's like these campus protests, okay? So you get these campus protests, people come up and scream about Israel as being genocide at their graduation. What are they doing? They're physically using the platform that they did not create. It's like if I came on here and I said, into the impossible, Dr. Brian King, that's all I did. Just came on here, like, would you air that episode? If all I did is and talk about your competitors or talk about people that are in the same space as you, and wow, you're not that good and like, oh, you suck and you do this and you believe that Israel's not competing in genocide, whatever you said, okay? At some level, you'd say, look, this doesn't serve me. This person's using me, using my platform to influence people in my audience to hear things that they want to hear. Now, they could be legitimate, but they didn't go out and create their own platform. They didn't go out and create Columbia University, did they? They're using the name Columbia University for the prestige to amplify some cause that they have that they believe in with great passion. Now, I don't think that's legitimate. I don't think if you invite someone to your show and they use it as a platform to only speak ill about you and to speak uh, positively about themselves and to amplify their own credibility. I don't think it actually works. I think it turns more people off. So peer review, cake keeping, legal safety, you know, actual gates. Do you see <laughs> where that goes too far though? Um, so here's where it went too far. In uh, in 2020, the COVID pandemic and the lab leak, uh, suppression of voices against the lab leak hypothesis, people that said it was racist to say it came from China, uh -huh. said it was better to say that they eat pangolins, bats, and, <laughs> and other shit, uh, that, than to say that it actually escaped from the lab inside of Wuhan, where there was no trail of things from the wet market, but there was 100% yeah. captivity of what was called, um, you know, what, what was called, um, what do they call the... 
actual platform that they were trying to, they were modifying this to genetic, the fur, uh, fur and cleavage site. They were doing all this stuff uh, for, you know, for basically enhancing the functionality of this, web, you know, possibly virus, you know, engineered virus, 100% an engineered virus that had been modified from some naturally occurring virus, okay? There were people that spoke up about that. They were suppressed, okay? They were kept out of journals. Their names were smeared. They were taken out of their university fundraising. They were put on probation. One of them is now the director of the National Institute of Health. He's actually one of my closest friends, and his name is Jay Bhattacharya. Mm -hmm. He was on my show during COVID when he was still out of, when it was 2020, 2021 rather, when he had been called a, you know, this fraudulently fringe epidemiologist yeah, by, by Francis Collins, yeah. director of the NIH, and, and Tony Fauci, none other than our friend Tony Fauci, um, a great Italian-American. Actually, I met a guy who went to the Italian, uh, the, the high school that, that Tony Fauci spoke at. His name's Steve Fuller. Anyway, the, the point being... We don't um, blame Fauci. That's, that's right. He exclude that out there on behalf of all right. Italian Americans. Exactly. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, can it go too far? Yes. Can it not? Can it also be an important thing for replication? You said before, science is about doing like confronting, you know, this or that. I actually don't agree with that. I meant to kind of pause it at that point. Maybe hit the WTF button. Uh, but <laughs> So, That's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> so there is no such thing as science. Okay. So science is just a Latin word that means knowledge. Okay. So anything could be Nile. Anything could be science. Anything could be knowledge, right? Um, it doesn't mean wisdom, by the way. That's sapiens, sapienza. Mm -hmm. So you, the Italians had some great, great ones that we you now use. That's what we call homo sapiens. We're wise. We're yes. not knowledgeable things. I mean, chimpanzees know a lot more about finding termites, you know, in, a, in an anthill than I do or in a termite mound. Um, so they have knowledge. Do they have wisdom? I don't know. Homo sapien, the man who is wise. What is he wise about? What is he not knowledgeable about? He knows that we're going to die. The humans are the only animals that are born know very soon after birth. We can't walk as fast as a horse can, or we don't have craw claws and talons like an eagle, but we know we're going to die. No other animals do. Maybe 10 minutes before they die, they might know something's up, but it's very different. That's what, that's what we're not knowledge of. And in fact, that's what it says in Genesis. What are you going to be knowledgeable if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? You're, it's called the tree of life. It means that you know you're going to die, and actually in the Talmudic uh, interpretation of it. I never thought about that. That's where it comes Animal, from. Animals not knowing if they're going to die There's or only a few different animals who exhibit behavior collectively. Elephants are one where like some elephant is about yeah, to die and they know. circle around each other and they yes. have some ritual and they do seem to exhibit mourning, but it's not like you knew you're going to die at age seven. I'm mean, not that you're going to die at age seven, but you knew at seven years old, right. I, mean, I have a seven year old kid. They know they're going to die someday. They have an abstract notion of what it's like. Now it's, let me tell you something, as you get older, it's very grave, no pun intended, on your mind that you're going to die because you only have so much time on the earth. Yeah. Right now it feels infinite. What are you in, 30s, something like that? I'm mm -hmm. in my 50s, right? So when I start thinking about like, do I want to have Bart Sibrel? <laughs> you know, do I want to spend like, by the way, having him on means the following. He comes to my studio. He looks at my laboratory. We have a crew. We do. The, it's a day, okay? It's a day yes. of my life dedicated to him. Or do I want to spend time with my seven-year-old? Or do I want to spend time with you? Or do I want to do it remotely? Or do I want to go on uh, Danny's show or Joe Rogan's show? Or then why talk about him? Why talk about him? Why make videos on him if you don't want to talk with him? That uh, would be the rebuttal there. I think you can also do what he's doing, which is what I'm doing now. So he went on a podcast to talk about the reasons we didn't go to the moon. Now I'm on a podcast talking about the proof that we did go to within the domains and restrictions of the word proof. And you don't think it'd be positive and like and something you'd feel good about afterwards, I've seen no especially evidence. given the preponderance I've, of the evidence you have, have to talk with Have I shown you evidence that I've changed my mind on things scientifically? Did I yeah. not write it? I mean, you yeah. said to Claudia that was one of the impressive yes, things that you exactly. liked about, right? Okay. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. that's a mark of a scientist, yes. someone who's willing to do that. Now, he's not a scientist. Candace Owens is not a scientist. Um, uh, Terrence Howard not a scientist. No training, formal training, no education in that way, self-taught or whatever. Uh, but when you see people that are... Um, that have done things also that are malicious, the way he treated Buzz Aldrin or was with Buzz Aldrin, um, mm. the aspersions that he cast upon uh, these other astronauts that he claimed, you know, that confessed things to him and then later on sued him. I mean, Bart's, may, okay, so let's leave Bart out of it. Okay. I think Bart's an exceptionally kind of difficult uh, persona. 
uh, one that's easily refuted remotely. There's no like need. There's there's no facts that are going to change about the Apollo uh, moon landing laser ranging finding uh, instrument that I put uh, that I told you about the lunar seismology project. The fact that our enemies, the Soviet Union, had an exact same uh, plan called Lunakhod, which means um, uh, Mars Walker. They did the exact same. They want to measure the distance of the moon too to prove their. They had a gravity. Here, by the way. They had a gravity and atomic program rivaling our. They were the only country rivaling ours, right? They built the exact same thing. Guess what? We saw their what their landers had, had, had put there, but they used the ones that the Apollo astronauts put there with actual photographs of it. And so you can go online and find pictures of the Apollo 11 moon landing site with footprints and the astronauts with the flag and our, you can see it from our enemies. So what does that tell you? Is that this elaborate hoax as 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 he's suggesting? Would it be not more difficult? Which would have been harder, to go to the moon when we had already had gone, I mean, he doesn't dispute that we were in the Gemini program. The Gemini program is a precursor to the Apollo landing mm -hmm. when they showed that Gemini meant twins. You could dock together a spacecraft in space in orbit in, in the high Earth orbit surrounding the Earth and then bring the astronauts back because they had it land on the moon, bring the lander back up to the uh, command module, then dock, then then that um, the uh, landing module back on Earth was totally different. Right, So they had this very complex, but a Gemini, he doesn't dispute that. Okay, we have like, you know, photographs and he doesn't dispute the astronauts left the earth. He doesn't, so, so where were they? Where they so, it, and then you have to convince our enemy at the time that we, to also, on our behalf, it would be like Iran is going to say like, actually, or Hamas, let me say like this, Hamas coming out and saying, Israel's not committing genocide. Like, do you, like, that would be pretty hard to do, right? That'd be hard. To Wouldn't do. be easier to create peace almost between Israeli, I mean, it's hard to do that too, between Israel and, and Hamas. Like, that could happen, right? You know, Trump could make it happen, could. right? Could be Abraham. I mean, do you think the Abraham Accords were possible 20 years ago? I didn't think that would be, that would be possible. Or do you think Iran could fall in, in 12 days in a war that, you know, Know, like nobody thought they thought they were the most powerful military in the Middle East, 92 million people. They fell in a couple hours when a couple of B-2 bombers flew overhead, right? They're now back to the negotiating table, right? Can you imagine convincing, like it's almost harder to get them to the negotiating table without the B-2s. Then, then in other words, people say, oh, the B-2s were a hoax. Like we didn't actually do it. They, we <laughs> never dropped a bomb on them. The Fordo is a mistake. Like that's just a little tiny yeah. blip on the map, right? All these things point to the fact that I wish they were a hoax. Oh, right. It's almost harder to make up the hoax. It would have cost more yeah. money to make up the hoax. So yeah. a person like that is not scientific. Bart is not a scientist. He's not gonna listen to evidence. All these things are rash. He knows oh, I'm I sure don't he think knows he will. Them. I don't think he'll yeah. listen to evidence. So then what what is the point from what's the upside? Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.